PGA Tour Champions Learning Center. Brought to you by Tour Edge Exotics. Hi, and welcome to Learning Center. I'm Vince Cellini, and it is great to see you. And we are joined by one of the fun couples on PGA Tour Champions. He is a 13-time PGA Tour winner, the 89 Open champion, Mark Kalkovecchia, his lovely wife, Brenda, joining us from their South Florida home. So we got the... Oh, nice. Claret jug there. and Oh, there it is. Sophie and Boeing and Boca and Sarazen. So there's the 63-game video game in one, which is a lot of fun. Galaga. 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 There's my guitars yeah, I, I play. Oh, nice. I don't know if you can see them. Yeah. yeah. Point, point th there. Oh, those are sweet. Are you pretty good? Uh, I'd say I'm about a 10 handicap. <laughs> That's all right. You get through. That sounded about right. Yeah. Taking it over to my exercise room. Okay. I have two dumbbells in there in, the, in a basket. You see them? Yeah, I got gotcha. you. <laughs> Overlook on the, 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 the putting green that was underwater a few minutes ago. Can the you chip out there as well? You have a little chip? Uh, yeah, you can, you can hit some chips out there. Okay. Uh, the pool's almost uh, flooded, still raining. Oh, wow. Look at that. And then... Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, the wine room. It was uh, it, it was a lot higher. It was about a good solid five bottles higher in each direction. Huh. See it? Well, you know. Yeah. But we still we're enjoy. still we're still good. We probably still got a couple hundred. Yeah. A couple hundred bottles in there, so oh, we're, no, we're we're good. No, it's great. That's very pretty. I like that. That's nice because you can still enjoy the ambiance of the wine room without you know sometimes it's so hidden. You can see all that. Oh, stuff. we walk cool. right by it 50 times every day. So yeah, they would beckon me if I walk by that 50 times a day. <laughs> and it's temperature controlled. So yeah, when you're hot, people just come in here and just. Oh, nice. 55 <laughs> degrees in there. It, yeah. That's she, funny. She throws she throws me in there when she's mad at me. That's funny. So cool. Well, when I see Brutus, when I see Brutus, I think of my little Jake. I have a, a Jack Russell Terrier. It's another Terrier. And, uh, he. We lost them a couple of years ago, but oh. Oh, so hard. Yeah, this is the playroom. Oh, nice. So this is where. Oh, okay. Look at him. There he is. There's Brutus just chilling. There's Lucy over here, uh, shaking. She's scared of storms, so she just sits there and pants. Poor Seven girl. Gunner. And, and what yeah. about uh, what about Mr. D? Mr. D he comes home tomorrow. tomorrow. Yep. Oh, he comes home tomorrow. Okay. He comes home tomorrow, so yeah. this is his last last training. So, what can you tell us about Triple D, Dexter <laughs> Diablo Destroyer? What can you tell us? That's you. That, that pretty much describes uh, describes all of them. He uh, <laughs> uh, he's going to be four months old here next week, so he's still just a little boy. But uh, uh, he he had to make a return visit to uh, to puppy camp. Uh, he was having a few accidents here and there, and uh, so now they're trying to figure out whether it's uh, the environment or whether he relapsed into you know bad habits of being a puppy. So it's just all part of the deal. Uh, my my arms did heal up a little bit until he got home uh, last week for for a week, uh, and, and then the blood started flowing again. But he's uh, he's going to be an amazing amazing dog. Uh, uh, our, our other dogs, Brutus and and Lucy, love him so. Uh, it's going to be uh, fun when we all pile on the bus here once we once we get going in July, hopefully. I cannot get Bernhard Langer out of my mind. The way he's playing golf at his age, uh, I think he's 62. So, yep. obviously, it's still possible. Jay Haas is still playing great at 66. So, it, you know, I'm, I'll be 60. Uh, and after going through what we went through, well, everybody's gone through in the last uh, two and a half, three months uh, with all this time off, uh, I just – I cannot retire. I've, I've got to get better and I've got to start playing better uh, because I still love to play golf and that's takes up a lot of time. That's, that's the good news. So, you know, it's just, just sitting around at home as uh, even uh, outboard me, which is hard to do. <laughs> but you really took a big stretch off, right? I mean, you didn't play at all for what, over 40 days, 44 days, something like yeah, that. Yeah. 53 days. I didn't play. Wow. And, and actually about a month of it was planned uh, after, uh, 
Newport, uh, which was our last tournament that we played. Right. Uh, I think that got over March 8th. Uh, I was, I was, I think I was going to skip, well, I was planning on skipping Mississippi. So that would have given us a five week break. And that was the, the, the five weeks that I was going to, you know, get in better shape and, and come back and, and feel like playing again in Atlanta. But, uh, you know, once everything got started getting canceled, uh, you know, then just time went on and day after day went by and I didn't play. And uh, oddly enough, the longer you go without playing, the easier it is not to play, at least for me. Uh, you know, some guy, Russ Cochran, he, he drove up to TPC Tampa Bay because they were open because he was going, he was so <laughs> bored he couldn't stand it. He, he has to make contact with a golf ball. Uh, I, I don't. But Again, what I did learn in that big time off was, uh, uh, you know, I, I did miss it. And now I'm, I'm playing probably four or five days a week. And, uh, you know, which is uh, it's, it's fun to get back into it. Good. I can't wait to see you back out there and playing. It's uh, it's always a lot of fun when you're in any event, for sure. Um, I mentioned the cooking thing. Brenda, you have to be careful, right? You cook gluten free. You cook very clean, right? A lot of the dishes you make. Tell us about that. I yeah, well, I have celiac disease, so we found that out about six years ago. So we've always been gluten-free since then, um, but we try and, and, and eat healthy. It's, I mean, being celiac doesn't mean you're healthy. It means you can't have, you know, um, wheat, rye, or barley. Well, you can still eat a lot of pasta that's gluten-free pasta and sugar. So we really try and cut out the sugar, and right now we're kind of doing the keto thing and... Um, and trust no. me, her, her gluten-free brownies are insane. You think, well, they're gluten-free. I can eat this whole batch, oh. right? No, no, it doesn't but, mean calorie-free. <laughs> what about fitness? What are you doing to try to stay fit? I've got a couple of 12-pound dumbbells sitting in the living room that I try to lift every day. Uh, you know, playing golf, that's about it. We, we are trying to uh, uh, do the low-carb thing, the, not full-fledged keto, but not, you know, substitute it with almond milk and, and cashew milk instead of real milk and, and just cut back. She's trying to cut back on her, on her vitamin waters and, and Gatorades and things like that. So we're trying to, uh, you know, if we can both lose 10 or 15 pounds, uh, mostly me, uh, I think we'll, we'll feel a lot better to, to, to start with. But uh, other than that, I actually feel really good. Uh, you know, I think the time off has been good golf wise. Uh, my back feels pretty good and, and legs and everything. So we'll see. We do walk. Okay, guys, let's get to. I'm sorry. Yeah, we walk. We, walk. Dogs and, we, we you take walk? the dogs out for a walk. So I mean, we take Lucy. I'll take her almost two miles. So. Oh wow, that's good. That keeps you moving. It's. Mm -hmm. I, I, I think it's important that you do that not only for the physical but for the mental aspect of this whole quarantine thing. Yes, you agree? Yes, absolutely. I mean, it's got to keep your mind, you know, at least in a good place. Uh, okay, let's get to what's your edge presented by Tour Edge Exotics. And uh, Mark, I want to ask you about trying to stay on point uh, being home. You play in a lot of pro-ams. How, how right, can folks, right. regular folks, sort of get ready for this? You know, I tell amateurs every every week on Wednesdays that, you know, they're kind of saying, oh, I'm having a terrible day or whatever. And I'm like, how, how often do you play? He goes, uh, about three times a year. I'm like, forget it. You know, it's just not going to work. So golf is a game that you, you got to play at least once or twice a week. Uh, I always tell my amateurs, spend more time. Don't worry about your swing. Spend more time trying to get out of the bunker in one swipe. You know, when you're just off the green, make sure you chip it on the green and two putt and not, you know, don't take four or five to get down from five feet off the green and you'll, you'll save five to 10 shots around just uh, working on your short game a little bit. So I, I, I think, you know, when you don't play for a long time, that's, that's the first, uh, first area you should go to. And I think at this point, correct me if I'm wrong, I mean, if you're maybe you don't have course access, get to a field or someplace where you're maybe 80, 80 yards and just, you know, work on that. I mean, that's helpful as well, right? 80, 100 yards in. Absolutely. Uh, if you can find any place to, if you've got some old balls, uh, just to, to hit them and, and make swings and, and, you know, feel like you're hitting a golf ball, uh, it'll, it'll certainly help uh, next time you go out and, uh, and play for real. Well, this week would have been the uh, principal charity classic week, and instead they've rescheduled that for Labor Day weekend, guys, uh, September 4th through 6th. Um, what memories uh, do you, Mark, and Brenda have of, of your win there in 2015, Mark, when you had the, uh, the famous bacon-themed pants <laughs> that you wore, which you may be wearing now, for all I know? Uh, no, I don't, I, I don't have I got a lot of dog hair on me, though. Oh I, I don't have them on now, but uh, when we first... Uh, 
got to Des Moines when I first turned 50, even though we played at a different course. We played at uh, Glen Oaks Country Club. Uh, we just loved Des Moines and West Des Moines. Uh, I grew up four hours from there in Laurel, Nebraska. Brent's from Columbus, Ohio. Actually, Ohio, actually. So it was kind of a mixture of both what we, you know, grew up knowing. So we just automatically just loved Des Moines and still do. Uh, and then when they changed over to Wakanda, and I had some good tournaments at Glen Oaks, when they changed over to uh, Wakanda Golf Club, uh, it's kind of an old style, hilly, quirky little club that's squeezed in a, into the middle of one square mile. And uh, I just seemed to play it well, you know, and then I, I just knew when I got there, I was, I, was, I love the town. We have a great place to park our bus there. I love the course, blah, blah, blah. And when, when all that happens, generally, uh, you're going to have a pretty good tournament. And, and that's just seems to work out well for me there. And just again, we, we've talked about this before, the pants thing. Um, <laughs> what was the genesis of the bacon pants? Well, uh, one of the friends that we met uh, over the years there, his name is Brooks Reynolds, and he is the co-founder of the uh, Blue Ribbon uh, Bacon Festival. So, and as you know, <laughs> Iowa and Nebraska and whatnot, that area, they're, they're big on their pork and bacon there. So, uh, he said, he said to me, and all his, he's, him and all his buddies are walking around in these bacon shorts, and they're pretty cool looking. So uh, I asked for a pair of those first off, and he says, uh, I got a question for you. What if, what if I gave you a pair of bacon pants? Would you wear them one round uh, at, the, at, the, uh, at, at, at the tournament, PCC? I said, uh, I'm going to have to see what they look like before I, <laughs> before I put these things on. And he sent them to me, and they fit okay. And he actually sent me two pair. And uh, sure enough, the first day, I think I birdied five of the last six holes to shoot five under. And I thought, well, I better wear them again the next day. Bacon and, pants it is. Yeah, yeah absolutely. And, and, and after two days, I, I wore the pair on Sunday that I wore on Friday. Didn't wash them. <laughs> you know, nobody's going to know. And uh, sure enough, uh, I ended up winning the tournament. And I mean, it, it became quite a story. No, that was an awesome weekend. An awesome visual, actually, of uh, you wearing those pants. And, and Brenda, I know you have caddied for Mark uh, in the past. You weren't on the bag that week, but um, you're you're doing something very helpful for many of the PGA Tour champions caddies who are out of work during this stretch, and you're on a mission uh, helping with uh, caddies for a cause. So I wonder if you could uh, again help our viewers, and we've seen you on social media promoting this. Uh, tell our viewers w what is exactly is going on, maybe an update there, and what they can do to help. Yeah. So actually, it was started by uh, Martin who caddies for Rocco, and it was set up uh, maybe a year ago, and they were trying to make sure if somebody, you know, we're a very close group out there. Being on the Champions Tour, these are people you've been with for 20-something years, so we're all really close. Um, and if one of us, you know, let's say one of the caddies was sick, we've had that, we've had caddies, you know, who had open-heart surgery, or maybe a family member that they've got to take care of and they can't be out there, you know, if, you, if you're if they're not playing, if we're not caddying, we're not making any money. So um, Martin actually approached us and Mark was getting a bunch of texts and he says, here, just answer this. <laughs> so <laughs> I deferred so it I, to her. I said, Do you deal he with goes, Martin. I, I don't know why these texts keep coming. He so sent, sent me a book of texts. I'm like, here. Well, it was, I know it's a bunch of people on a thread. So it, basically I jumped in and, and he was looking for donations and things maybe to auction. And I said, better yet, why don't I join your group and I can help you guys out with this. I've done a lot of work with this auction company um, and we can help you find stuff. So then we became, there's nine of us. And so we became nine for all. Right. Um, and Caddies for a Cause will have an auction. This is to raise money for basically any caddy that caddied full time, um, either full time last year or maybe the middle of last year through this year. We really only had four or five events if you didn't play hawaii there we were off for five months so right. after this hit we hadn't even had two or three tournaments under our belts yeah. so um we're trying to raise money either through donations or this auction and we have gotten such amazing i can't believe the things that people have donated i mean we just reached out and it's not just golf it's been nascar it's been hockey it's been baseball football um, rock stars. I mean, Nico McBrain sent this amazing poster from Iron Maiden to auction off. Um, Austin Dillon sent an entire racing suit. 
and he I guess it was one of his racing suits um I I decided to try it on and it fits so <laughs> so <laughs> might be bidding on it <laughs> um but some but really great cool. items and and this is the sixth yeah. June 6th through 21st 21st yes yeah. so it ends on Father's Day I believe yeah and well that he, it's through thegolfauction.com again it starts the 6th and you can keep bidding up until the 21st um so through all those donations then we will divide it up between the eligible caddies and um we give them a, a stimulus check and, and several players have sent a lot of money too so, it's been amazing so we've got cash and everything is going to add up to be a, a pretty nice deal no, I, I think it's terrific, and I want to uh, thank both of you uh, for them and for us for doing all that great work. It's, it's really important, and it truly is a family, and if you're out there, you get to really get to understand that on PGA Tour Champions. So mm -hmm. we look forward to seeing you both uh, when the season is set to resume in late July, the 31st, at the Ally Challenge, you and the rest of uh, the players and the caddies, and, and then we can do this actually in person, so that'll be a lot of fun. But it's great to spend Sounds time great. with you, and I wish you well. And um, you guys, thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. All you right. Got it, man. Thanks, Vince. Thanks.